What is up, YouTube? It is Doc here, Docky Style Gaming, and I am back at it again with another Godfall video for you all today. And in this one, we are going to be finally properly breaking down everything you need to know and all of the details for the brand new Spirit Realm game mode. I've been getting a lot of people to ask me to break it down, so here I am. And without further ado, let's hop straight into this video and straight into this breakdown. Now, if you are a Fire and Darkness expansion owner or a God for Ultimate Edition owner, you will have four versions of the Spirit Realm, one for each of the realms in game. If you have access to the Challenger Edition or just the base game, you'll have three different realms to go to, Earth, Water, and Air. Now, once you head to any one of these realms, you'll start to see a bunch of different and unique items either floating around or just placed all around the map. We have things from altars, teleporters, gates, shards, and just so much more. So let's go into all of these one by one. So first and foremost, let's talk about something that you're going to use for just about everything in this game mode, and that is the souls. Now souls can drop randomly from enemies, bosses, and mid bosses. Another very easy way to guarantee some souls are chests as well. They drop in three different colors, red, blue, and green, each depicting the attribute that they main. So red are might, blue is spirit, and green is vitality. Now these will come into play when actually placing them in altars. But before we get into that, let's take a look at all of the different beams of light that I'm sure all of you are noticing when you activate your spirit vision. Now, of course, spirit vision is key to this game mode. There are certain enemies you can fight in the game mode, and they can unlock new teleporters and make it easier to see different locations on the map. And some of those locations are indicated by different beams of light in the sky. So let's break down all of these different beams of light. The purple beam of light, that is where the Elder Gate is, and that is where you'll always want to return when you drop an Elder Soul. You have your green beams of light, which are your teleporters. All maps have four teleporters scattered around the map, and you can activate them by putting in one soul. Once the teleporter is activated, you and your teammates can use it non-stop though, so you don't have to keep putting souls in to keep using it. But if you find a teleporter in the realms, going through it will bring you back to the main Elder Gate where you'll deposit your Elder Souls, or if you're at the Elder Gate, going through them will send you to different parts of the map. Now, one of the other beams of light are the blue ones, and those are the Shards of Macros. When you first get into the spare realm, there are typically three located across the map. In order to activate the shard of macros, you will need four shards to put into it. Now, it doesn't matter what color shards you put into it, but four shards will activate the shard of macros. Doing so will spawn a spirit form of macros, and you will get some brand new lore and dialogue for the game. But also, every time you activate one of the shards of macros, you'll get a boon that gives you and your teammates a buff for the entire run. So if you or your teammates have extra souls you want to deposit, Shards of Macros are a good place to do it to give you and your teammates a whole new slew of buffs. Now the last beam of light are the yellow beams, and those will take you to the soul altars. All of these souls that you and your teammates are picking up are meant to be placed in these soul altars to start different encounters and ultimately get you an outer soul. Now there's actually two different mechanics for the soul altars. You could just place one in in each one of the pedestals to activate it, or you can overcharge it and fill up every altar stone with three shards of the corresponding colors. Now doing this will overcharge the soul altar, which will both increase the difficulty, apply banes, and will come into play when it comes to the main boss fights. Now honestly, it's more essential if you can, especially if you're running with a team, to overcharge these soul altars. Especially because you have a lot of players who can carry up to five souls each, placing three of the same souls in a specific stone is definitely the smart thing to do when you have multiple teammates. Overcharge events are definitely essential for certain Valor play shards, and some of the mid bosses that can be unlocked via this are also useful for some of the Valor play shards as well. And speaking of mid bosses, while you're playing throughout this game, there are random mid boss encounters. Now, the first one, from what I've timed, is about every 17 to 20 minutes is when the very first one spawns, and then the rest are very random while you're playing through your normal Spirit Realm run. But like I mentioned before, some of these mid bosses are used for your Valor Play Shard unlock. So if you see them, go get to them and make sure you are running with your whole squad because there might be some people who need those bosses for their shards. And if you're the only one that beats them, they won't unlock it. So be a good teammate and wait for the other players to get there and help fight the boss. Now, moving back to the soul altars, 
Now, one more thing to note when running the soul altars, depending on the types of souls that you put into it will dictate the type of elder soul that you get and potentially the type of loot that you'll get from the final boss fight. The Spirit Realm game mode introduces the new loot type of dual primary augments and they can come in both vitality, might, or spirit. So if you place more spirit augments in a soul altar, your soul altar encounter will be a spirit attribute encounter and each color dictates the type of challenge that you'll experience and then again as well the type of loot that you'll get from the boss fight. So if you're after very specific loot or very specific dual primary augments, make sure to put in the specific color souls that you want in the soul altars. Now, if the soul altar is primarily red because of more red souls, the encounter will increase the damage the player takes. If the soul altar is charged or overcharged with primarily blue souls, it'll change the way your banner works during that encounter. And if it is primarily green souls, it'll affect the player's recovery and give the enemies much higher defense. Now, once you completed the soul altar, whether you just put in four so you can activate it or you put in 12 souls so you could overcharge it, the completed encounter will grant you with an elder soul. Now, these souls are what you're gonna wanna take back to the elder gate, which is also the huge purple beam of light that is in the sky. Now, again, teleporters will take you right back to it or if you're close enough to it, just put your spirit vision on, follow the purple beam and you'll head right to the elder gate. Once there, you'll place the elder soul on the elder gate and you will have to do this two more times to activate that gate and depending on how charged or overcharged the elder soul was will dictate how difficult your boss encounter will be as well as the rewards that you'll get from it also but once you have three elder souls placed on the elder gate you will be teleported to the main boss arena now again like i mentioned depending on the type of elder souls that you put in and depending on if they were overcharged will dictate the boss fight in general now if you just did normal elder souls you'll have just the boss encounter with not as much loot but if you overcharge the encounter Counter, you'll have a secondary mid boss to fight on top of fighting the main boss both dropping a bunch of legendary loot aka those dual primaries but once you beat the boss and mid boss or depending on your overcharge just the boss you will head right back down and you can rinse and repeat doing so will continue to increase the difficulty and increase the rewards every time you charge an elder gate and fight the boss but with that that is pretty much spirit realms in a nutshell now this is a six player game mode and if you want to play with six players you can either run it in matchmaking and honestly it'll have players drop in and out while you're playing in matchmaking because you can leave the encounter whenever you want or whenever you're ready or you can squad up with a party of three go to matchmaking and generally it'll squad you up with another party of three spirit realms is definitely a lot more fun with multiple people or honestly just a full squad of six this is definitely one of the more unique game modes introduced in the godfall and is definitely more fun when six players are in so if you haven't got into the spirit realm game mode hopefully this will help break it all down for you and get some of those brand new dual primary augments i've gotten quite a few and it is interesting to see the different types of builds I can start using these on. But with that, let me know if this video helped you out. And if it did, be sure to let me know in the comment section below and I will catch you all on the next one and most likely today's stream. So follow the Twitch channel if you haven't. Link to that is in the video description as well as the link to the Discord as well. We have guides, builds, LFGs, and so much more for Godfall on all platforms, other games that I cover on the channel and some that I might not. It's a pretty big community, so if you're looking for people to play Godfall with, squad up for Spirit Realms, complete shard objectives, my Discord is definitely the place to be. I honestly think I might have been one of the first people ever to exalt every Valor played in the game, and that was primarily thanks to multiple people from the Discord helping me with some of the shard runs and shard objectives, and a lot of people from my streams as well. So again, if you haven't joined the Discord, I highly recommend you do. Other than that though, guys, I will catch you all on the next one. Thank you all for watching, like always. Again, be sure to leave a like if you liked the video. If you didn't, still leave a like because nobody's gonna see that dislike. Other than that, I will catch y'all all on the next one. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the subs. Peace.